thought we started well, squandered a couple drives there, settled for field goals, and then just got out of rhythm offensively and didn't. Um, I didn't call a very good game, and we didn't execute very well. And then uh, turn the ball over in the second half, and you just can't do that. Offensively, why weren't you guys able to really execute and get things going, especially in the red zone? Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, I thought we had a good week of practice. Um, got to give them credit. Uh, but we weren't able to run the ball at all. And then in the passing game, we just uh, weren't very sharp, weren't very crisp in our decision making like we had been. And, just kind of floundered around the entire night. What with McLean there at the end, was there any thought process of going to him sooner than he did? No. Um, <clears throat> you know, you could kind of tell he's, he's still rusty. I mean, he's been working his way back into it. That was his first game action in a long time. And um, so we wanted to hang with Jet. Jet's obviously a little banged up as well, which everybody is this time of year. But I uh, just thought it may be able to give us a spark there. And unfortunately, you know, we fumbled that. Uh, snap was low, and we fumbled it, and then it just kind of didn't work out. When it comes to Duffy, you said he's been progressing, but is it something where you know it doesn't quite translate sometimes to the field as football or as ball security goes? Yeah, I mean, we, we've you know had our moments where we've made a lot of good plays, and then you, you can't just drop the snap, and you can't throw interceptions down there in the red zone, and, and those are things he's got to continue to work on, and I got to continue to to coach him up on. Um, you know, his efforts great, you know. He's uh, he fought through some injuries tonight, and uh, he's got a chance to be a really good player. But we got to eliminate that, that ball security issues. How much is that decision of leaving Jet in, just sort of hoping that he'll kind of work through the keys and sort of figure it out on his own? Yeah, he's a young player still, as far as experience goes, and you, you want to give him a chance to work through it. And I, it just got to a point where we weren't doing anything um, like I thought we should be, and, and so I wanted to give McLean a chance to kind of jumpstart us and see. He hadn't played in a while, but just wanted to see what, what he could do. And, and uh, you know, it didn't work out the way I wanted to. How much, the, how much were the elements today a factor in your I, I, I didn't think so. You know, we practice in the mornings, and it, we've had some chilly mornings in, in Lubbock. And I, I really didn't think it was a factor. I just think we didn't execute at all offensively like uh, we needed to. With that being said, man, I mean, that's – if, if you don't uh, blame any part of it on the weather, then how, how can you account for only scoring six points by the, in the 11th game of the year? Yeah, that's uh, bad uh, bl bad play calling by me, obviously. I mean, that's – I thought they, they, you know, got after us. They seemed to play harder and um, took it to us. We knew where they would be. I thought we had a good plan, but I, I didn't uh, – obviously put us in positions to be successful. But, uh, when it's a two – Two score game with nine minutes left. You had that fourth and eight at your forty. Did you think about going for it at all there? Or? No, I thought um, you know the way we were playing that was a little bit much offensively. I didn't think we were seeing it very well in the quarterback position, and so I thought uh, let's punt it, try to stop them, still have all three timeouts, and get it back with six minutes or so left, and, and still have a chance down two scores. Anything else? Um, since you're not playing Tyler Carr and Reed Bowman's out and Mason Reed's a big body is out, how much does that limit what you do package-wise with not really having a true fullback, maybe Dante Thompson? Yeah, um, you know, we, we'd uh, – I, I don't think it affected us too much, honestly. We, we put Trey there for some stuff, Trey King, and, um, you know, Dante's still kind of in that backup role there, so I didn't think it was too much of an issue. Seeing uh, Allen out there today, uh, is he? Is it possible he can play next Saturday? I'm not sure where he's at. Um, you know, that's the tough part. Physically, he could do it tonight, but he's, uh, you know, that thing's got to heal internally, and so we're just waiting um, to make sure he's fully healed. So it's another situation where he'd like to be out there, but the doctors haven't right. said go go ahead. Yeah. Right. Uh, you get three stops from the defense inside the thirty. What did you think of you know their play kind of keeping you in it? Yeah, they played hard. Um, you know, it's a physical offense, and you knew what they were going to do, try to control the football. And um, they, they had some key turnovers that they created and some stops there that kept giving us a chance offensively. We just uh, couldn't get anything going. We just squandered it offensively. What did you see or did you on the uh, play where Jeff got his uh, – 
hand or arm hit on the blind side and lose the fumble? Yeah, I, I, I couldn't really see. Um, you know, we had a pop pass on and it looked like the guy had a nice spin move inside and I, I didn't know if his arm was moving forward or not, but it was really close. Is it, how uh, frustrating or disappointing is it that y'all put a premium this off season and spring and summer on being able to run the football better and, you know, with Coach Johns coming in with his new idea, with his ideas and now basically since the Big 12 opener, you have not had a running back go for even 65 yards. Yeah, it's disappointing. Um, you know, we feel like we have a group good enough to do it, and uh, we just haven't got it done for whatever reason. Um, you know, we've had some good offensive outputs, and we've gotten some shootouts that we kind of got away from the run, but a couple of these we just weren't able to execute the run game like we need to. Hey, Warren, with, with only, with, you, you start fast again, but with only two field goals, um, with only two, you know, two field goals out of those first couple of drives. Is that another is that a case where you, you know, had a chance to pounce? And yeah, I think so. Games? Same deal as, as last week. Um, you know, even that first drive, we squandered two plays back to back, didn't get a signal on one, and then we snapped the ball when we didn't call for the snap. Um, just loose football, not, not tight football that you got to play in the red zone, and um, we got to execute at a higher level. You know, the kickoffs, obviously, Dequan is a guy who's made plays for you and giving you some big returns. But does he lose his poise at third times? I don't know if loses his poise. It looked like he misjudged the one. Um, and then, uh, you know, the last one, that's just tough. Trying to make something happen, probably shouldn't have, and um, those things happen. And Cliff, I know you, didn't blame, you don't blame any part of it on the weather, and you've said that, but um, you look down there and K-State has multiple heaters with a half a dozen guys huddled around the heaters at, at different points in the game. And, you guys are standing over there freezing. Is that something where you're supposed to bring your own heaters? No. Or gamesmanship there? Or? No, not at all. Um, like I said, I, I didn't think it was an issue at all, really. Talking to our guys and watching them play and move around, it's just we didn't execute. Well, I think everyone that's a part of this program knows that, that what we put out on the field the past five games is not us. Um, we worked too hard to put that product on the field, and that starts with the players. I mean, coach puts us in the best position to succeed at any given time. Um, and we're just not executing. We're not playing physical enough today. We went out there and we just got our butts kicked. And that's something that you put on the leadership, us captains. We're not, we didn't get the players ready. We didn't hold each other accountable. And we're getting called out on that. And that's something that's, you know, going to cause growth in the locker room. And, and hopefully this won't happen again. Ruff, I feel like we talk about you guys executing a lot and not doing the little things and not executing. And Coach, a lot of the time, puts it on himself when it comes to, you know, he's not playing calling. But at the end of the day, you guys are the ones out there. Why do you feel it's been hard to get yourself in a position to really win these games. Absolutely. And, you know, coach is just trying to – coach is just that's, – that's coach. You know, he'll take everything on his own shoulders when in reality he's putting us in the best positions. I mean, he's the best play call in college football, and he's proven that in his tenure here. Um, it's – when you're not executing, you, it falls on the player's shoulders, and that's the culture of letting the little things slide. Uh, I think that we haven't really addressed on this field. Um, and we've pride ourselves in changing that and, you know, the way we clean up our locker room. You know, having your shoes tied, earrings out when we, when we lift, all these little things that we stress so much, and then in the games we want to let it slide. And that, again, that falls on the captains, falls on anyone who calls himself a leader, that we're not holding ourselves accountable, and that's the reality of it. It's nobody who is on salary here. It's no coaches. It's no strength coach. It's, it's us as players. And it's easy to point fingers at, at anyone else, but you put it, put it on your own shoulders, and that, that's the reality of it. Why do you think you, you struggle to run the football so much lately? Uh, starts with physicality up front. Um, I think is that uh, early on, you know, our offense is is a, is a has always been an air raid. We've prided ourselves, we pioneered it, and we're not giving coach enough confidence because we're not executing it as an offensive line. Um, I mean, if you look at how we've come out the in the first half, running the ball season, uh, offensive line hasn't been very sharp, or we'll have some some poor blocking, or you know, missing the right hole, or something like that that falls on the running back and the offensive line. And if we're not executing early, he's going to go back to what he knows. And that you can't blame him for that. That's all on us, all as an offensive line, all as running backs. As a captain, how do you make sure to keep most of the key parts of your offense up, whether it's Duffy or people in the run when they're not successful? It's been hard to click, you know, especially today. How do you, you as a captain, approach that? 
ask? Well, I think you first understand that the offense we're running isn't a quarterback's offense. It's not, it's not one person's offense. It's a double T's offense. And that's been the best offense in the country for, for a long, long time. And no matter who we throw out there, who we have, you know, if we're throwing a one, two, or a five back there, uh, we should be able to execute this offense. We're, we have the best game plan, uh, best, we're the most prepared team at any given time. Um, but the reason, it just, like I said, it falls on us. As a player, as a captain, what do you do now to change it now? Four, four straight losses, but you have an opportunity to still get six wins. Absolutely. Our backs are against the wall, and that's when you find out what kind of men you are, not just players, football. I mean, you can, you can go out there and push shoulder pads and hit people. Any time, in the t any time of the year, and it could just be fun. It's just football, but now it's it's, it's a pride thing. I mean, what do you want for this universe? What do you want for this program? What do you want for these coaches who sacrificed so much? We worked too hard in the off season to go put this project on the field, uh, and I think it's going to kind of hopefully light a fire. And like I said, our backs are against the wall. We're coming out swinging, and we want to get the sixth win next week. Travis, last four games: um, Iowa State, OU, Texas today. Y'all scored first in every game, and. In Three of those four you scored, had the first two scores. Mm -hmm. So it's obvious you guys have come out of the locker room kind of fired up and ready to go. What do you think has changed after you? And obviously, both, particularly the last three teams obviously had a lot of offensive weapons. But what do you think has changed after you know you had a 10 nothing lead, a 14 nothing lead, 7 nothing today? You get the two field goals. Right. What do you think changed after y'all come out and play the first quarter? Right. I mean, just like a boxing match, you come out throw the first punch. But it's about how you finish the match, how you finish the round. And uh, I, I think that we might come out throwing our first punch, throwing our best punch forward uh, as an as a offense. We're, throwing, we're coming out swinging, we're coming all this stuff. And then as, as offensive line gets complacent, uh, we're, just, we're not finishing the blocks that we need to. We're not, you know, we're just, we just kind of get comfortable. You know, I think that's something that falls on, uh, again, us players that I think we just, I, I, can't, I don't know how to put it into words, but it's a feeling that, is uh, hard to describe that we are, I think that it's just, we, I guess, I don't know, I'm sorry. Um, like I said, we're getting comfortable and we need to finish the game as players. The, uh, Travis, the play where uh, Jet got blindsided, and uh, got because he had the ball out to have a fumble. Like, he got a little yes, there. Oh, absolutely, yes, sir. It was a pop pass, like Coach said. Um, and I was behind it. I tried to make up for it, and he's a heck of a player. Um, he just got me on that one. It hit me with a good inside spin move. Um, you know, hats off to him. It's a shame that that, that whole situation played out the way it did. And I, I put it all on my shoulders, 100%. Um, yeah, I'm not sure exactly what went on. Um, can't blame the weather. Uh, we knew it was, I mean, we've been practicing in it all week, same type of weather. Uh, just guys didn't execute, like you said. Um, and I mean, you just can't have that in games like that when you want to extend your season. How do you change that? Because it's been week after week, it's the small things, it's executing. What can you do to change that now? It's been four straight games. Uh, I mean, if we had an answer, we would definitely use it. But uh, I mean, you just got to keep going and practicing. I mean, just watching your film, knowing what they're going to do, and just come out there and play your best. And tonight definitely wasn't our best. What's the most frustrating part about this loss? Uh, just the, I mean, this, that's not our team. Uh, I mean, just about everyone in that locker room knows that's not us. Um, this looks like one of the teams in the past. And uh, we, I mean, we were very soft on all three phases. Um, I mean, they just dominated us. Uh, credit to them for being prepared and uh, playing a hard game, but we got to get better. You went down in the first half, was it shoulder? Or what, what was uh, no, I just took a shot to the ribs uh, from one RD lineman, but I was fine. Showing these last four, the last four games, starting with Iowa State, OU, and Texas, and today, you know, three of those four, or all four of those games, y'all scored first, and mm -hmm. three of those four, he scored, had the first two scores, because he had Iowa State touchdown field goal, and led Oklahoma 14 to nothing, and today gets the first two field goals, so it's apparent that you guys are coming out of the locker room, you know, ready to go and fired mm -hmm. up. What do you think changes after y'all kind of get that early lead and play the first? I'm not sure. I guess guys are getting comfortable, um, thinking they got it made, I guess. I'm not sure. But, uh, I mean, we've emphasized finish for the last nine months, and uh, we haven't done that. Um, like I said, I'm not sure why it's not happening. But, uh, I mean, we got to do it next week if we want to keep playing. What do you think about a play like uh, 
That was huge. Um, we all knew he's a playmaker. Um, excited to see what his career holds. Um, I mean, he's been big for us all season. I mean, uh, he'll continue to do that. And uh, hopefully they throw more balls his way if he keep making plays like that. Besides being a vocal leader, what can you do in the next week to help make sure this team not only takes the step forwards it needs to, but so you guys can get a win against Baylor and get to six games? Yeah, just got to keep everyone positive in the locker room. Um, don't, let he, don't let any guys turn on each other. Um, We've came too far for <clears throat> guys to turn away from each other now. Uh, it's been a tremendous season. Um, I mean, enjoyed everyone's company. So we just got to go out there and play for each other, play for these coaches, and just, just let it all out. You showed a moment ago, you, I think you said you felt like you were playing soft. But, you know, you're de defensively, you all did make several stops down there that were really big in the red zone to kind of keep the team in the game. Mm -hmm. So it looked like you had the right just with the way you rose up and kind of protected the, protected the end zone, particularly there in the first half, up to the point Adrian had the interception, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> I don't think we should have got let them get down there, honestly. Uh, we just had a few busts here and there that let them uh, gain some yards that they shouldn't have. Uh, but we know we're way better than that on both sides of the ball. And like I said, we got to get it together for this last week. I know you said y'all aren't running away for the and that you worked out in cold this week, but those guys over on their side, that line had a bunch of heaters and went down there, and you know there's a half a dozen guys huddled around the heater here, and same thing with the heater there, and you guys are standing there freezing. Was there any talk about that cold? Nah. Uh, we tried heaters two years ago in Iowa. You saw what happened then. Um, so, I mean, you just got to be mentally tough, man. I mean, this is football weather. It's what you signed up for. And uh, so the weather's not an issue at all.